In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. Christ is in our midst. So in the Gospel reading today, we hear a, of a very sad and troubling uh, state of humanity. You know, and upon first hearing the Gospel of the, the Gergesene demoniac, you know, it seems uh, very, very far from us, something certainly uh, that we can't relate with at all, and, and probably on the surface level, something that does not resonate with us at all, other than all of us naturally at one point or another feel some form of empathy, of course, uh, for the demonic. But if we reflect upon this Gospel reading just a little bit further, we see indeed that it is quite relevant to all of us because God shows us that He's willing to go to those darker and harder to reach places. And indeed, we are called to do the same. But brothers and sisters in Christ, if we are called to go and do what Christ did today, upon hearing that, our first reaction is right away applying it to others. You know, who out there might be like the Gergesene demoniac, cut off from humanity, cut off from God, and indeed even literally, because of what they were suffering from, cut off from themselves uh, in so many different ways. But brothers and sisters, if we are going to venture out and try to help others, who are in those dark and lonely and isolated places, we have to first do it within ourselves. And we see a pattern in the Gospel readings and indeed throughout church history and the lives of the saints where they first had to become healed before they could go and become missionaries and evangelists and healers and disciples themselves. And the form of their healing often came through, perhaps it was conversion from their former ways, perhaps it was repentance, perhaps it was physical healing, perhaps it was you know, psychic healing. But each and every one of them first had to come to terms with and resolve their own life before they could go forth and become healers. And so likewise for us brothers and sisters, whether it's due to sin, or to pain, or to a sad life story, or even, God forbid, some unresolved trauma in our life, there are parts of our inner selves and our inner world that become like the demoniac, cut off, broken, cast in shadows and darkness, sealed off from the grace of God even, that there becomes places within us that has become detached from the grace of God. And, and brothers and sisters, it's not God doing that to us, but in those situations, we choose that. It's chosen, where we kind of break ourselves off from God, and we find ourselves living in a state of profound separation. Separation from ourselves. Separation from humanity. And indeed, separation from God. And if it's due to sin, it's often self-chosen. And oftentimes when this happens, it's because we've compartmentalized where we, perhaps we allow ourselves or tolerate that secret sin in our life, that secret vice that we kind of just leave there and try to detour it spiritually. But even that act fact of ourselves, we've created a pocket of space that's just like the space of the gathering demoniac, of darkness, of coldness, of isolation. But in the case of unresolved pain even, or trauma, you know, that hard to reach space, that's just hard for us to go there. Of course, that's not our fault, right? And so it's only natural, of course, that we want to stay away from those places. For example, the people in the Gospel reading, they didn't want to go there, they bypassed that area of the tombs. 
where the demoniac lived, he'd become so separated from humanity that he lived among the dead, among the tombs, perhaps the only place he could find acceptance, the only place where he could take refuge. He had to take refuge even among the deceased. And so it's only natural. He was frightening. They were afraid. And of course, we can't hold that against the people. Perhaps they were even afraid for their lives. And on the surface, it probably seemed very justified to detour, to not go that way. But Christ showed us a different calling, that we are called to go to the, the hard-to-reach spaces, both on the outside world and with other people, but indeed within ourselves. And so, brothers and sisters, you know, when we, when we struggle with something, the Gospel reading does really resonate with us. In those dark and lonely places, you know, when we're struggling with something and feeling alone or cut off from other people or up at night, whatever it might be, there's overlaps even with the life of the demoniac, which is indeed, he's much closer to us than we realize. And so the message today is that as we set off on the path to theosis and deification, we must go deep. We must go deep because in order to be able to really be a healer to others, to, and that's ultimately what God wants, is for us to bring everything to the light and to bring liberation, not only the light of Christ and to liberate others, but first and foremost, it has to happen within us. That there can be, even an unconfessed sin can create a pocket of darkness within us. And as I said last week, it must be brought to the light. And so whether those, those pockets of dark spaces within us are due to sin, or due to pain, or due to forbidden places we just don't want to go, or unresolved trauma, whatever it might be, as Orthodox Christians, we're called to bring light to them, and first, with the help of God, to liberate ourselves, and then to go forth and to try to help liberate others. You know, there's a saying uh, in the counseling field, we can only take others as deep as we ourselves have gone. And that actually applies to the spiritual life. So the deeper we go within our own spiritual life, the deeper we dive within ourselves, it gives us courage, it gives us strength, it gives us knowledge, and it gives us resilience. So then with that when we encounter those demoniac-like people out in the world or those frightening situations, we have the wisdom and we have the experience and we have the guts and the courage to go there. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.